Hi, welcome to the studio. Joining me today is this Rocky Mountain elk because we're going to be talking about antlers and horns. Before we start looking at how to make the antlers, let's take a look at Mr. Elk's head here. You can see that his head is all finished. He has his ears, his eyes, everything is attached. The last thing I do when I'm making an animal like this is I attach the antlers or the horns. And they are just made out of fabric. They're very firmly stuffed and they are hand stitched on. There are no wires inside so there's still some flexibility here so if he gets uh, a little bit bent during shipping or storage that's fine. You can just bend it back into shape. There's nothing that's going to break here and because it's quite firmly stitched on they really never come off and surprisingly they never get floppy at all. So let's take a look at how to do horns and antlers. The first step is to choose your fabric and in this case I use good old t-shirt fabric and this is uh, some used t-shirt fabric and I've covered the basics on what kinds of fabrics I like to use in my hands and fingers video and so the, the basic process is the same so you would have your fabric, you have your pattern, so here's the pattern that I use for the elk antlers. Just put it down, trace around, and then you sew on the line, and then you're going to cut it out. And again, remember that when you're using stretchy fabrics like this, you don't need to use a small stitch or a zigzag. In fact, it's a good idea to not do that because you'll run into more trouble. And then once you have your piece sewn, you're just going to cut it out, and I use probably about an eighth of an inch seam allowance. And if you need to, you can clip the little corners and inside curves there. And then you would just turn this using hemostats. And it is not difficult at all to do. Just go slowly and all will be well. And then after you have your antlers, you will stuff them very, very firmly with fiber fill. And, you know, these are so firmly stuffed that they actually spring back into shape. There's no wires in here, again. Um, and so it's, it takes some time. You use just a little bit of stuffing at a time. And it's, it's not a tricky thing. You just have to make sure that you don't get any weird lumps or bumps. Now this pair of antlers, I'm actually not very happy with it because I think it's a little bit too fat and puffy. And you can fix that. If you get that, you find that your fabric is too stretchy. You don't have to start over with another fabric. You can just work on the antlers that you have. And in this case, what I did is I got some pins and I took little bites of the fabric and essentially I made little darts along the seam lines or wherever I thought that the antlers were too uh, fat. So then you just go and hand stitch that and if the stitching shows that's fine. I don't worry about it but you can cover it and I'll show you how to do that in just a minute. So then once you have your finished antlers you're ready to attach them to the head. So I have a, a little fake head here and Remember that I don't stuff my heads with fiber fill. This is actually a very dense wool felt head, so this creates a very firm base for the very firmly stuffed antlers or horns that you're going to attach. So in this example, I've got something that uh, I would use for a bighorn sheep, and it's the same sort of thing as the elk that I showed you a minute ago. It's very firmly stuffed. It's almost hard. And what you're going to do is you're going to sort of hold it against the head, get your pins here. And the key to success here is the pinning technique. This is where you have to pay special attention because what you want is this fabric that the antlers are made out of really pulled tightly against the fabric that's in the head. So what you're going to do is take a bite of the antler fabric, probably about a quarter of an inch away from the join with the head and then take your pin probably about a quarter of an inch again with the join of the head so it's you've got like a half an inch space there and then you you need strong pins for this you're gonna take a bite and pin into the head and pivot that pin so it's pulling this fabric and you can actually see it deformed out of shape and that's what you want that's good so still holding it firmly sort of move the head around and then you're going to do the same thing at least four times. 
And so you may be thinking, well, this looks kind of bad because I've got these, these little points of fabric sticking out, and that is not what I want. Well, actually, that is what you want because what you're going to do is you're going to go along and you will tuck all this extra fabric in as you go and you're going to have something that looks like that and you can see that is on there it is not you know it doesn't even want to move I only have four pins in there now it's very very firmly attached so if you want to you can go in and fill in these spaces with more pins but I generally don't do that because then I find that it's difficult to maneuver around all these pins as I'm hand sewing on. So I'll usually use just maybe four or five pins around the horn. And remember, if you're doing something like antlers, that's a really small circumference, so you don't have this much room to work in. So I'll take stitches with the needle and thread to sort of do away with all of those little points of fabric that are sticking out here. And essentially I just stitch it on with a ladder stitch. So let's take a look at a deer head that's in process. So here we have a really nice mule deer and he's got his antlers ready to go and so they're on there. I mean they are not gonna move. You don't need to add any glue. You don't need to do anything to reinforce this, it's simply the strength of the thread that's going to hold us on there. So the key then to keep this attached for long term is to use a strong thread. So I use an upholstery thread and uh, I actually use kind of a hefty needle and then you're just going to take little stitches and just go slowly all the way around and if it looks like you've got something uneven, you can just dive in with your, your needle and go and take a, an extra little bite wherever you need to. Just one row of stitches all the way around and you're done. That's it. It's nothing special. It's nothing fancy. It's just really the key getting those antlers or horns pinned into place firmly to begin with. So let's say that you had a, a blowout when you were turning your your antlers or you did some of that stitching to get rid of some of that extra fatness and you didn't like it and you want to cover up any ugliness well all I do is I just cover it with some seed beads I have a variety of off-white or bone colored seed beads and then I just stitch them on and you know the funny thing about this is it adds a little bit of texture it's kind of decorative but people never notice. They never notice. So you may be thinking, well, you know, this is just horrible having these little weird things sticking on there, but no, people are not going to notice. Trust me. So give it a try. Uh, this is a really nice, flexible technique. It's easy to use, and pretty much everyone has these materials at home. So attach some antlers, some horns to anything. It doesn't have to be an animal, it could be a little human head, you could be doing some sort of little fairy creature and this would work great. And the, uh, the nice thing about doing uh, a human head is then if you had hair you wouldn't have to worry about the join showing here but really it doesn't anyway. It's kind of a surprise, especially if you're using wool and the knits, it just soaks up all those stitches. So hope you enjoyed the little tutorial. Something simple that looks amazing when you're done. Thanks for stopping by.